so much in common with my mother. Some of it's hereditary. We talk alike, we laugh alike, we have the same smile, the same hands, and the same eyes. Some of our similarities are behavior I've learned by osmosis. We are both avid readers. We both love 70s folk music. We both get verklempt when we talk about a book or a song or a TV show or a movie that moves us. We've both worked hard to build our professional reputations. We both remain committed to our faith, even though at been times it's been seriously tested. Most importantly, we rarely leave the house without lipstick. Over the last 18 months, I watched my mother fall in love. It was wonderful, weird, and awful all at the same time. <laughs> wonderful because she is so happy. I haven't seen her this happy since I was a child, and she deserves it. Weird because it's my mother, and she's in love with a boy, and she's giddy, and she wants to talk about mushy stuff. The roles are completely reversed, and it's disorienting. Awful because just as she was falling in love and planning a wedding, I was grappling with the fact that my own marriage was ending. My mother and father divorced when I was a sophomore in high school. It was hard watching her grow small. She tried to display grace under pressure and put on a brave face. She put me and my brother first. She was right by my side through high school, grad school, first job, second job, third job, marriage, moves, more jobs, kids. A few years ago, I started noticing something was lighter about her. She looked at me one day and she said, well, I think I'm finally out of my fog. It took me almost 20 years, but it's clearing. I helped her set up some online dating profiles. We set those filters so tight that only Mr. Wright himself was going to get through. <laughs> and in the summer of 2013, he did. He proposed later that fall, but she made him sweat it out for a few months before she accepted. They set a date for the end of June 2014. As my mother emerged from her self-proclaimed fog, I retreated into my own. By the time mom and her beau made their engagement official, my husband and I were desperately clinging to the hope we'd make it. But I think we both knew we wouldn't. Anger, shame, blame, and hurt had worn us both down to nubs. And those exposed nerves just jangled and caused tension in the house like you wouldn't believe. We were snappish with each other and with the children. It was my turn to grow small. For the first time in my life, I didn't feel like I could talk to my mother about this. I didn't want to be the black cloud raining on her parade. So I smiled while she talked about wedding plans, while inside I ached and worried. I dutifully accompanied her to register for gifts, choose food for the reception, and pick out a dress. Those are wonderful memories, to be sure, but it's if I slept walk through the process. As she and her fiancé consolidated households, I eyed the furniture they were selling and giving away. You need to tell them to store it, my husband said. You know, in case we separate. He means when for when we separate, I thought. But I couldn't say it out loud. Not yet. And not to my mother, who was over the moon happy. The wedding week arrived, and it was full of laughter and joy. Mom was gorgeous. She smiled nonstop for three days, and I don't think James let go of her hand once. They were surrounded by family and friends, celebrating their love and commitment and future. I was determined to be the picture-perfect matron of honor slash daughter of the bride, so I smiled, laughed, hugged, joked, and served as best I could. I managed to keep my mask intact almost the whole ceremony, but as I stood at the lectern to deliver my reading, I made the mistake of looking out into the crowd. I saw my husband sitting with a strained smile on his face. 
I saw my sweet children sitting next to him, oblivious to the pain that he and I were in. And then it caught my mother's eyes. My mother, my support, my compass, my heart, my mirror. My voice cracked. My eyes filled with tears. I paused, choked them back, shook my head a bit, carried on. After her wedding, months later, when I told her that my husband and I were indeed separating, she listened to my whole story, every last mistake, blemish, failure. She hugged me and she said, you've done so much for me in the time that I've been by myself. You've rescued me so many times. Now I'm going to rescue you right back. And she has. These days, I can feel my own fog lifting a little bit around the corners, slowly but surely. My smiles are more sincere, my laughter more genuine, my day-to-day -day feels more authentic. I look at my mother, so happy, so giddy, so mushy, so in love, and I am grateful. Grateful to have so much in common with her. Grateful that she has walked this path of single motherhood before me. Grateful in knowing that I may once again walk the path that she's on now.